Hi, I'm Pete Placina, the Gadget Guy. For more than 150 years, photography has involved light, chemistry and dark rooms. Today, all that has changed and while photography is still about light, the chemistry and dark rooms have been replaced by pixels and software that allows you to manipulate images. This makes the art of picture taking much more creative and so much more cheaper than with film. In a digital camera, analog film has been replaced by light sensitive image sensors that converts light into electrical signals, which are then stored on the camera's memory card. If a digital camera's sensor is 24 by 36 millimeters in size, then it's said to have a full frame sensor because it occupies the same area in the camera body as a traditional frame of 35 millimeter film. A digital camera's sensor size can vary enormously from one camera to the next and is often referred to by its crop factor. This is the number you use to find the 35mm equivalent of any lens and sensor combination. If a sensor is full frame, then there's no crop factor. If the sensor is a crop sensor, then there is a crop factor. This means you must use a multiplication factor to determine what's known as the effective focal length for your particular camera and lens combination. Most digital SLRs have either a 1.5 or 1.6 times crop factor when compared to 35 millimeter film. So as an example, a 28 millimeter lens on a camera with a 1.5 times crop factor sensor would act like a 42 millimeter lens on a full size sensor camera. If you take a photo with a larger sensor camera on a certain lens, it will show a larger area of the scene. If you then take a photo of the same scene from the same spot with the same lens, but a smaller sensor, the camera will capture less of the scene. So when you fit a lens to a camera with the smaller sensor, the lens is often said to have a larger equivalent focal length. Sensor size is important when considering a camera and both full frame and crop sensors have certain advantages and disadvantages in different situations. One real advantage of a digital SLR with full frame sensors is that the individual pixels are usually larger. This results in images that are less noisy. This means that photos will have less unwanted graininess or specks of false color. Also, full frame sensors have better image quality and give photographers more options when it comes to wide angle shooting for subjects like landscapes and architecture. Crop sensor cameras, on the other hand, utilize the central position of the image on the sensor, which is often sharper than the edges. Another good thing about crop sensor cameras and their lenses is that they're typically smaller and lighter. They're a good choice if you want nature, wildlife or macro photos or need extra reach with long lens shots to maximize detail at greater distances. On the downside, crop sensor cameras with their greater depth of field don't allow for good blurred background shots with isolation of the subject. Another important factor with sensor size is ISO sensitivity, which used to be expressed as ASA with film cameras. Since digital cameras do not use film, but have image sensors instead, an ISO equivalent is also usually given. ISO simply indicates how sensitive the image sensor is to the amount of light present. The higher the ISO rating, the more sensitive the image sensor, and the better suited to take pictures in low light situations. Keep in mind smaller sensors tend to develop graininess at higher ISOs, whereas today's DSLR full frame sensors can handle incredibly high ISOs, enabling evening shots with practically no graininess or noise. So if you're a complete amateur or a semi-professional, the sensor size of your camera is a vitally important part of the equation when choosing a digital SLR camera.